Hey guys, Luis Cuevas here with MakeNorthTexasHome.com and Remax Cross Country. And today I wanted to talk to you about what a CMA is. All right, so let's talk about a CMA. You may have heard that term before and what it stands for is Comparative Market Analysis. And what this is, is a good way of comparing uh, where the market is in relationship to the subject property. And the reason I say subject property is because many people think that it's just for sellers when in reality it can be used by buyers or sellers. At the end of the day, you're using this as a tool to kind of gauge where the value of the property is, where the um, property should be listed uh, according to the market and to the numbers, or if you're making an offer, where your offer should be. Again, at the end of the day, you want to see where the market is, and this is going to help you. All right, so how do we put an actual CMA together? And that is going to require that we put a couple of things into consideration. First and foremost, and again, remember this can be for a seller or for a buyer, is that we know, number one, is that we know our subject property. So if you're a buyer, you're looking into purchasing a home, that's gonna be our subject property. If you're selling your home, that's going to be your subject property. You wanna know everything about your subject property so that you can accurately compare it to other properties, uh, which we'll get to in just a second. So you want to know what a uh, what year it was built in, how many square feet, number of bedrooms, bathrooms, stories, um, the square footage. You know where did it come from? From the tax, the appraisal. We want to make sure we're working with uh, a proper square footage, uh, lot size, etc. So once you know all those details, like upgrades, does it have granite? Um, you know what type of flooring, etc. Once you have that information, then that's where you can sort of get started. But you have to know your property. All right, so number two is to find comparable property. What we mean by that is we're going to be going into the MLS system. We're going to be looking at listings, not only that are currently on the market, more, more importantly, the properties that have actually sold. Remember what sets the MLS apart um, is the fact that that information is just within MLS. In other words, it's not public information. So you won't know what property sold for um, unless you have access to this. So if you go to Redfin, Zillow, Trulia, all that stuff, those are just estimates that are grabbing from the air. It's not actual data. So in the MLS system, what you wanna do, and what your agent will do, is we're going to go back and look at the sales for the last six months. Now I will tell you, right now the market's hot and we only sometimes have to go back three months because there could be a big price gap between what a property sold for six months ago and what they're selling for now. So usually about three months on a hot market. If we need to, we can go six months. We want to stay within the neighborhood. We want to really want to stay as close to the neighborhood as possible, half a mile, one mile, but really you should be able to get a lot of info and similar properties there. And you want to get properties that are very similar to your property. I like comparing one stories to one stories and not one stories to two stories because there are differences. And usually if it's a big enough neighborhood, you'll start seeing similar floor plans and that really helps out. So find comparable properties and that is going to be key to seeing where that market is for your property or the subject property. All right, so number three would be to make adjustments. And what I mean by this is not all the properties will be identical. Remember that some properties will have not so good carpet, maybe they don't have granite, uh, maybe they enclosed one of the garages, turned it into an office or a bedroom while yours may still be a garage. Um, the lot may be smaller, the lot may be bigger. One property may have a pool. So there's all these factors that you have to take into consideration. Uh, if you don't find an exact similar replica of your property, uh, sometimes you're gonna have to make adjustments for the square footage. So keep these things in mind um, and you'll have to make those adjustments so that you can see, okay, well this property had a pool. How much did we take off for that? This property didn't have granite. How much should we add to ours? Um, you make all those adjustments so that you can fine tune it and give you a ballpark of where you should be. All right, so once you do those three things, you're really going to have a very good idea of where the market is for this subject property. You're gonna have an idea of what other sub, uh, similar properties are selling for in the area. You may have had to make some adjustments and you know where your property is in comparison. So that should really fine tune it and a good real estate agent will put that together for you and really fine tune it and give you a little bit of a range of where they think your property is. All right, so one thing that I did wanna be clear about is that the comparable market analysis is a CMA and it's not an appraisal, meaning that I'm not an appraiser, realtors are not appraisers, and we're not giving you some keywords, which is worth and value. We're not telling you those things because remember, those words are reserved for an appraiser. 
that's what they do. They determine uh, the value of a property, what it's worth, their opinion of value. Remember that a real estate agent like myself is not an appraiser, so we're just giving a comparative market analysis to you to give you an idea. But we're using the same tools, we're using the same comparable uh, data, we have access to the same data to be able to come up with these figures. So it should be rather close, but at the end of the day, it's not a replacement for an appraisal. All right, so as you can see, a comparative market analysis is extremely valuable. Not only is it valuable to a buyer, but also a seller. Remember, before we go to put in an offer on a property, we sit down and we do a CMA. I, as your agent, will have that all ready to go and we'll present it to you so that you can come up with an idea of an offer. When it comes to listing a home, same thing. We look at all those things, factor everything into the uh, equation, and that's how we determine what list price we want to be at. At the end of the day, it really helps you to recognize where the market is for your subject property. So I really hope you found the value of a CMA. Hopefully you know a little bit more about it now in case you hear that term thrown around. But I hope you picked up a thing or two. Uh, and of course, if you have any questions, you're more than welcome to reach out to me. I'll be more than happy to help you. And thank you so much for watching this video. Now, hopefully you enjoyed this video. And if you want to see more, don't forget to uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel, which is Make North Texas Home. Or you can check out more videos on my website, which is MakeNorthTexasHome.com. Thank you so much.